Now, let's continue and calculate the capacitance of the plane capacitor. That's a classical case and everybody knows the equation to co calculate the capacitance of the plane capacitor. Here you can see it on the screen. This formula is absolutely accurate for the two infinitely large plates. Now we have a small pieces from those infinity plates. The plate size is one meter by one meter and the distance between plates is 10 centimeters. There is a dielectric media placed between plates with permittivity of one. Let's simulate this case in quick field. Now this is my quick field problem. The problem type is electrostatics. The model class is plane and parallel. The model depth is one meter. This is my model the left plate the left plate is marked as floating conductor and the right plate I put charge on the right plate here and negative charge on the left plate between plates there is some dielectric media the electric permittivity of one and I have to specify the reference point with non-potential again I can place it in anywhere in my model I decide to place it here in the center of the capacitor this is my reference point with non-potential value Now let's take a look at the simulation result. We can see the potential lines. I will adjust the picture. This is the electric field strength distribution in the plane capacitor. It's a constant value as it should be. Now let's calculate the capacitance. Again I will use contour from one plate to another and we'll calculate the potential difference. Here you can see. Let's calculate the capacitance. I know the charge is one yes it's one thousand picocoulombs I divide it by the voltage difference the voltage drop by potential difference and the value I get is eighty eight point five four two let's compare with the theoretical result 88.542 and here 88.542 the same value well we get the same value but you may notice that the field distribution is some way unrealistic. The field is locked inside capacitor. There is no external fields here. This is an ideal capacitor. Let's add 
externals and simulate a hill capacitor. Now this is the model of the real capacitor. The problem type is electrostatics and the model class the same plane parallel and the model depth is one meter. It's the same capacitor. I have the dielectric media between plates left plane, pl right plate, positive charge on the right plate, negative charge on the left plate, the reference point in the same place with known potential. And now I add exterior, the air. My capacitor is surrounded by the air now. Let's take a look at the simulation result. I will adjust the picture. Now you can see that the field surges outside of the capacitor at the boundary. Let's find the capacitance now. Again I make contour here and calculate the potential difference. Let's calculate the capacitance. 1000 picocoulombs divided by the potential difference. The capacitance now is 111 picofarads. And in my ideal capacitor, the capacitance was 88 picofarads, about 20% more I get with the real capacitor. Quickfield novices from time to time ask us questions about capacitance calculation. They ask why the capacitance they get with Quickfield is not the one they calculate with this equation. Now you know the reason. There is a field leakage in the real capacitor. And it's an interesting question. In which cases can we use theoretical formula? Let's move plates closer to each other. This should reduce the leakage field. And I would like to simulate set of problems varying the gap between plates. To speed up calculations I will use Label Mover. Label Mover is a tool for parametric calculations. It's included in every quick field package. Label Mover is a very simple tool. First you should choose the base problem. my capacitor problem. Then you should specify the values to measure. I will measure the potential on the left plate and the potential on the, rough, on the right plate. Then you should specify the steps.
I would like to move my left plate to the right by one centimeter. Move my plate to the right by one centimeter. And I will move my right plate to the left by one centimeter. Now this is my step. Move left plane to the right and move right plane to the left. And I would like to repeat this step while possible, till my plates hit each other. So I have the base problem my real capacitor. This is my real capacitor. And for this model I will move plates together by one centimeter and for every step I would like to calculate the potential of each plate. Let's end in simulation and take a look at the result. First, a set of problem is created. In each problem, the specified the specified step is applied. Then the set of problem is solved, and in every problem, the value of potential is measured on the left plate and on the right plate. The results are then stored in the table. Now everything is ready. This is my last problem. You see the plates are now moved close to each other. Now I can copy all the data to Excel and calculate the capacitance there and compare with the theoretical solution. In fact, I already have the, the data from Label Mora. These are the data I get from Label Mirror. This is the distance between plates. The left plate potential, the right plate potential, the difference between the potential difference between plates. And this is the capacitance of real capacitor calculated as the ratio of charge to potential difference. And this is the value calculated by the theoretical now, when the distance between plates is 10 centimeters, the difference is about 17 persons. If I move the plates closer to each other, I will get better agreement between theoretical value and the real capacitor capacitance. Let's move to the next example. This will be cylindrical capacitor. The cylindrical capacitor consists of two coaxial cylinders placed one within another. The space between cylinders is filled with dielectric media. There is a simple equation to calculate the capacitance in this case. This formula is 
absolutely accurate for the infinitely long cylinders. Now we have a small piece from those infinitely long cylinders. Let's simulate this case and find the capacitance. Now this is my quick field problem. The problem type is electrostatics. The model class is axisymmetric. We have the axis of rotation here. Now this is my dielectric media and I have internal cylinder and external cylinder. Again I apply negative charge to one cylinder and positive charge to another cylinder and I have to specify the reference point and in this case, I choose the inner cylinder as a reference point. I set zero potential on inner cylinder surface. Let's take a look at the simulation result. I will adjust the field picture. You can see now the field lines, the vectors of electric field strength and the color map for electric field strength. Now let's calculate the capacitance. I know the charge. I need to find the potential difference. Now my inner cylinder has zero potential. I set the reference point there. So I will simply measure the potential of the outer external cylinder. I add the contour and choose the external cylinder surface and integral value the average surface potential. I know the charge. This is my inner cylinder has zero potential. External cylinder has this value. So this is the potential difference. And I need to divide the charge by potential difference. 1000 picocombs divided by 12.45 9. 80.26. Let's compare with the theoretical result. 80.26. 80.26. The same values. But again, it's an ideal capacitor. The field is locked inside capacitor. There is no external field here. Let's add the exterior and calculate the capacitance then.
Now this is my real capacitor. Again I have internal cylinder, I have external cylinder, I have dielectric media placed between cylinders. I put charge positive and negative charge positive on the external cylinder and negative on internal cylinder. But now I add the air. My capacitor now is surrounded by the air. Let's take a look at the simulation result. I will adjust the field picture. You can see that now the field surged outside the capacitor. There is a field leakage. Let's calculate the capacitance in this case. Again, I choose the surface of external cylinder and calculate the average potential. Let's divide the charge by the potential difference. And compare with the theory. For 84 in real capacitor versus 80 in ideal capacitor. Again, you cannot use this formula to calculate the capacitance in real capacitor. There is a field leakage in real capacitor and this formula will not give you accurate result. Of course, we can move plates closer together and again run simulations with label mover. But we have little time. Let's go to the next example.